Hello everybody, it's Lumi and Finish Chart, and today of course is my day of the week. And you'll notice this is not live, and there's a couple reasons why. The first one is the live broadcasts are not really doing a hell of a good for anybody. It's just making everybody slightly miserable with complications and of course drops audio and video that looks like crap and frankly Major colossal waste of time. Um, sorry, boys and girls, it's true. <laughs> it is a colossal waste of time. Now, me and Michelle have been working on this now for a few years, um, trying to come up with a way to do a live stream. And we did do a live stream, but we have them doing them. Michelle, of course, covered Ice Cream Social in Winston on the, uh, what was it, um, Saturday. Yes. And then you covered the pet parade on Sunday. Yes. And some people still wondered what was going on with the Justice for Trudy thing. And I want to get my take on it. Please do. I'll start with the most important thing of all. Michelle has done everything she could at that time and has apologized to Trudy as best she could. Unfortunately, when she tried to call Trudy on the phone, Trudy hung up on Michelle and Michelle only thing she could do was just leave a message on Trudy's voicemail explaining that she was sorry for what had happened. And Michelle has a hard time hearing things and of course that day things were just so crazy that Michelle never really saw it coming, which is true. When you're doing a live show, that's the reason why we kind of gave up on the live streams, um, is you get people calling on the phone, some people were sincere, some were not. I'll leave that up for you to figure what the case was here because clearly as Michelle said to Dory, you don't know who's on the other side of the wire. And you don't. Sometimes you get good people and then the nice people and they're kind people. And sometimes you get the really bad ones. Um, if you get the really bad ones, how can you tell if they're really real? <laughs> Especially with modern technology and voice sampling and all this stuff, it's almost hard to be sure what's going on. I wonder how Dory would react to someone with a speech synthesizer like Stephen Hawking would have called. That's a good question. That is a good question. I find your videos to be disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> she probably would be more. <laughs> say, it can't be real. I can't be real. Of course it's real. Look, in fact, that was a horrible, horrible emulation of a speech synthesizer sounds like. But still, the idea is that Stephen Hawking's speech synthesizer is um, is how he communicates is by little twitches of his eyes as people um, moves uh, on the screen the things that he makes words kind of like hunt and peck typing like Michelle does with her phone. Yeah, um, it's more like this, Lou. I find your voice disgusting. Sorry. <laughs> That's better. I find your voice disgusting. Please change your tempo in your perch. <laughs> well, anyway, the point here is, is that for people who have speech problems, that is about the only way they can communicate. And so for people like that, using voice systems like that, if you have speech impediments, is the only real easy way to do it, unless you're typing on the keyboard and just giving responses on the screen. Michelle had a friend who was deaf and blind. Um, the poor guy couldn't even see at all, and he couldn't hear at all. Um, he originally could hear, could see, but he couldn't hear. I mean, it was tough all his life, and then his eyesight failed. Um, so. He used a Alva Braille terminal, and and on the Braille terminal he could read the screen 
40 cells at a time. Yeah, 40 cells at a time. And the, um, he could still type on a regular standard typer keyboard, so he used the computer's keyboard, which was plugged in by PS2. The Elva Brella display was connected by a parallel port cable, and um, and that's how he communicated. So it made reading for him, reading text on the screen on his computer really slow because um, he couldn't even use anything like modern graphical interfaces. Well, don't forget, well, back at the time, it was the early 90s, and most everything was still pretty much text-based, so that worked out pretty good for his Alpha Braille terminal, but it, today, with modern Windows, Microsoft Windows products, I don't know if that would be too practical. Right, okay, well, the point is, is we're not trying to make fun of people with handicaps, because me and Michelle are handicapped as well. And we understand that there are people that for a variety of reasons may be using um, digitalized speech to communicate. For example, Jerry Lavelle called Michelle and she heard that her it sounded like her voice. But instead of acting like Dory, she realized it was um, he was treating her pretty decently. So he, she responded to his questions that he asked her and... Um, and it went pretty good, didn't it? It went pretty well. I didn't have a major problem asking him to repeat himself too many times. Um, and I, I, I told Dory, sometimes you do got people that sound the same. And no matter what, you got to be respectful of them because, hey, look, they're taking the time to communicate with you, you know? So be decent to them. Right, I agree with that. Okay, so be good to them. As Bill and Ted would say, you want to say it together? Be excellent to one another! <laughs> Absolutely! you got to be excellent to one another. It's, it's, it's the way they are, you know? It's, we're humans, we're all in the source together. Um, so, that was a great thing, was is that Michelle also got in contact with another, uh, two other people. One of them, his name was William. Um, I don't remember his last name right now, but that's okay. Uh, I don't know if he wants the last thing given on anyway, um, on YouTube. And uh, he said to me that he was wondering what the real story was. And he called me up on the phone. I was in the park. Uh, I had just gotten done taping the um, Lore of the Pet Parade uh, park side of it. And, uh, and, he talked to me and he asked me what the real story was what happened. I told him that um, that day was just crazy and that uh, we couldn't guarantee we could hit a person very well. And I said, um, I never expected that to happen the way it did. So um, he thought about what I said and he kind of understood that it wasn't like we were deliberately trying to cause harm to Trudy. That's the whole point we're trying to get out of here. Um, and yes, we did indeed made an effort to put out an all branch for Trudy, but Trudy never called me back, even on my private line, to discuss the matter, and uh, so I don't know. You think she really would call you? I don't know. Um, I really don't know. She was so soft-spoken, and... Um, um, just like Dory's friend, she has a kind of, you know, a voice that sounds kind of soft-spoken, kind of anxious, you know, like, um, like she didn't know what to say. Um, I think Nancy had a little more confidence than Trudy, but that's okay. You know, it's, some people have more confidence than other people. Um... I think maybe the reason why Dory thought maybe was was Trudy calling was it recording because as you notice from listening to the sound, even when Dory calls to you on Google Voice, is that you can't hear too much interference in the background because the Kodak basically keeps most of the white noise to a minimum. Yes, it does, and I think maybe that's why Dory thought it was mechanical because of that lack of background noise, but 
Um, in fact, nowadays with the phone systems as they are, they actually have to artificially generate that and put it in the background so people think that they're still connected to each other. Well, no one in the background knows it's so quiet, you can't tell if you get the other person in the background, and that's why you send the same and say, Hello? Are you there? <laughs> because sometimes I can't tell. All right, so. All right, so let's get back to the next topic of this discussion. All right. Um, the live streams. Um, after that experience, you said that we're not doing them anymore? Um. Definitely not with phone calls, no. No, oh, um, um, absolutely not. Um, although I did have a very interesting experience in the park, too. A young lady who apparently knows me from my YouTube videos came up to me and said, Could you do a selfie with me? I went, Sure, but I'm also doing a video for my YouTube channel, too. I should have had her into more of her face. Instead, you had it into her chest. Oh, that's okay. She got a good she got a good shot of me on her camera, so on her phone, so. Um Um so next in to what I'm gonna do next year is uh since I am kind of a local celebrity, even if it is very minor, um I'm gonna try to get into the Laurel um the pet parade next year. So next year we're gonna have to work on a platform or I uh, mean if it's not a platform um, but I was going to have something like that, you know, something like a platform, something so that, and then we can get a nice new dress and, um, and wear our circlets for the office of the sun queen and stuff. That sounds cool. You got a whole year to get on. Yeah, and a whole year to work on losing some more weight at the same price time. Um, okay, so now let's, so... Do you think people would appreciate that with that, you being in the pet parade as a North American snow queen? Or do you think some people will go roll up their eyes and go, Oh, Michelle, do you really have to do that? I don't know. I mean, it could go either way. <laughs> Seriously, you know. Um, but this year, I certainly didn't feel I was ready to be listed as a North American snow queen. Alex, I would be in 2021, Michelle will be a North American Snow Queen for 10 years. Yes. <laughs> wow. You've been doing this a long time. Well, that's 2021, right? That's only 2017. All right. <laughs> um, but uh, still, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, so... Cat's fine. Yes, he's fine. Although, given what I was talking about the bill. Can I get the pet bill up for a second? Yeah. I want to see that too. Okay, boys and girls. I have in my hand the bill and receipts for oh okay so house call okay this is only for the one cat rabies shot the house call is fifty three dollars mm hmm and the comprehensive physical exam was forty nine. The rabies for one year was twenty three dollars. Um, that's the um, antibiotic cream uh, injection they gave him. The convenia injection was twenty three dollars. Laceration repair. That's the suture. So it's a hundred and thirty. Pain injection. Right, that's the medicam. Anesthesia for the for getting him fixed was forty five. Um getting him neutered was seventy five. Brevecto topical feline 
I think that's their uh, medication for the plane ticket medication. So, it came out to be a total balance. Uh, the total was $500. And then they charged 496 And uh, so, it reminds the rest of the week. So, them plans for two years old, that's about right. Yeah. Three year. Um, typical feline. Okay, so. I guess they're giving the booster shot too for the FVRCP booster. Three years. Ray, three years. Ray. Really? Three year rabies shot? Shoot, I didn't know they gave a three year rabies shot. I didn't know either. Um. I looks so many movies animals to scrape below. Da 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 da. da, da, da. That way. It's two years. Okay. Manufactured by B O I N G S the vaccine information. Certificate number zero day rabies vaccination. Next rabies vaccination is on two thousand and seven zero five seventeen two two thousand and twenty. So this is a three year so does that mean that free needs this? They say, they say you're supposed to give the cat the rabies shots every year. So, um, I'm going to say, alright, okay. Spit. Medications were given at the time of treatment. No further meds are required, and please go for any questions. Okay, so basically, um, Rusty is doing good. He's um, I might as well bring that to your attention. He um, gotta put that with the legal bag stuff. Yes, I do. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Now in here, um, as let me go tell you, is this floor is a mess. It's full of Doritos. What? That <laughs> Tori must have dropped a couple of chips and he must have stomped on Probably did. Alright. So anyway, in this here is all of our documentation, our old tax returns, um, everything that we need, legal black lands, birth certificates, everything. And uh, so we keep everything here in a documentation bag. So that if I need to go ahead and then we get out of the emergency, say fire or kind of start catastrophe, I can get out quick and fast and have everything ready to go. And uh and that's what we do. We have everything all packed to go. We have everything all set to go. Yes. Okay so no that means that the three year Vaccination for fame will be given as well. Right. Okay. Uh, in the case of Rusty, it was important to give him the vaccination because we had no idea what bit him. Right. And since fame can benefit from the same updates. Might as well give it to them at the same time because they were both giving their initial shots at the same time. So. And so let's give and the vet take a quick look at fame and see if he's okay. And Now, I was going to make some pancakes today for dinner. And Dory went, Michelle, I don't really want breakfast for dinner. <laughs> like, 
Well, what else we got? We got pizza. Um, we still got one for pizza. One for pizza. She said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take pizza. I'll take pizza." I'm like, ah. Michelle doesn't want pizza. It's not that I don't. No, no. It's not that I don't want pizza. It's just okay. Part of me feels kind of like the commercial with the guy with the frosted mini weeds commercial eating tofu crunch. I want taste. I want something different. I need. I want something that that has, you know, a, a different meal for once. You know, because it's the same old food every day. It's not really that exciting, and and I kind of need a little bit of break break for the meal. Well, yeah, I kind of understand that, you know, what you're saying, so. All right, so, anyway, so, you did a lot of live coverage with this weekend, starting on Saturday and Sunday and stuff like that. Yeah, what's the weather going to be for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow it's going to warm up a tiny bit, up to about 24 degrees, and then um, after that, the temperature is going to drop down to about 16. Really? Yeah. For how long? It's going to be like that for like two or three days. Wow. It's better than what's going on in the, the, the Midwest. And they've been getting snow in Colorado. And they've been getting snow in parts of uh, Utah and, and uh, Nebraska and, and North and South Dakota. They've been getting snow out there. Amazingly, in Wyoming, you could actually go skiing in the summer right now, the ski resorts. And in addition to that, in the Sierra, in Sierra Nevadas of California, it snowed enough that snow that they are actually going to be open. The ski resorts will be open in the summer this year. Amazing. Amazing indeed. That's what people are going to probably enjoy that. Skiing in the summertime, that means that you'll be putting on suntan underneath all your ski goggles and stuff. Well, I don't know. Oh, that's a great question because, I mean, if you're skiing, I mean, you're all covered up with a, well, layers of skiing um, equipment. I don't really think you're going to get worried about getting sunburned. However, you can't say the same thing about your retinas at your eyes. But you could get snow blindness because uh, that's actually where you get a sunburn of the retina. Of the eye because of the ultraviolet rays would be reflecting off the snow and summertime is usually pretty bad for that so um you definitely going to want to wear some uh ski goggles or eye protection to keep the uv's um rays away from your eyes and um things like that so so the 20th 22nd um winter storm valerie packed a hell of a punch that's for sure and of course, people did manage to. Yep, they did. Yep. So, seems like this floor is in is a disaster. It's full of crud. Uh, um, this floor is uh, is kind of battered. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So basically, the um. The weather this year is it's just been very cold this year. And I'm not really I'm not too impressed by it, but uh, people, some people who are, um, Michelle hates worrying about the dirty floor. I hate getting crap in my cracks on the floor. Uh, not exactly the best tool for the job. No, I'll have to get a, uh, something a little more powerful. Preferably with a vacuum suction power. Maybe like using a vacuum to grab a stool and just suck it out of there. Uh, anyway, but the point is, is that, uh, yes, the weather is been extremely irregular. And even this year in Connecticut, we're seeing colder temperatures. That's because things are changing. We already know that. And um, do you have anything to do with that? Are you part of this problem? No, <laughs> and no I'm not. Not this year. I... I um, it's definitely not my work. Um, it's it's just a big enough system that's because the sun itself has is not running quite as warm, and so because there's been less solar flaring, and so it's from the flares is like flaring them over barbecue when you cook a steak. It 
it sears it a little more than if it's just a steady heat with no flaring up. Um, the earth has always been very uh, perceptibly, um, always between the finance, between a frozen ice ball and a totally unfrozen planet. Um, we're, we're not even talking about the point where you got oceans turning to steam, but seriously, you're dealing with something that's so, an astronomical unit is so fine, it's hard to really pick about it that much. But um, what's going on with all the other ex exoplanets? We know that there's a few other possible Goldilocks planets in the so called Goldilocks zone, um, but those. We don't really have enough information on them yet to really ascertain the um, the atmosphere of the planet, or even if they actually have liquid water. We just, just based on what the distance from the stars, it looks like they should be habitable. But we don't know nothing about the the chemical makeup of the planet to determine if it supports life as we know it. Um, so just leave it at that for now. But the um, the thing here is is what makes this totally awesome is as we um, go through and see all these changes in the world around us, I think it's kind of amazing to think about, they say it's 2018 or it's going to really start to uh, ramp up in the cooling cycle. Yeah, definitely. How is that going to affect the average person? Um... If the weather gets too cold too quick, um, that's gonna be interesting because I don't think most people on this earth are really prepared for it right now because they've been pushed, they've been taught so much about global warming that they're not ready to deal with global cooling. Um, that we have been, the, our governments have been teaching, telling people to go the wrong way, talking about where the Earth is going to get hotter, and uh, that's not what's happening. So that means that more and more people are physically going to get sick. Um, really quite a shame to think of. I really wish we could do something different about it, but we can't, so kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. Is it too late to prepare? I would say we're getting pretty close to where the window of opportunity is closing pretty quickly. Um, the first thing is, um, ideally you should have been prepared years ago. And the case of the Y2K events, for example, where people were stacking up food, guns, ammo, 2012, same thing. Food, guns, ammo, water, shelter. If you still have your 2012 prep, you will probably be better off. If you do not have anything or you used it up already, after all, I mean, it's 2012, so anything that's been sitting around in food storage will probably have been rotated out. This might be a good time to start re-putting new food back in to replace what you have removed. This way, you have spare food on hand. Okay. How about eye drops? Eye drops! You know, that's a great question. Eye drops. Um, yeah, should you keep extra medications on hand? If you got medications that are not going to expire on you, yes, you should have them. Um, keep extra eye drops and medications on hand. But you still will have to rotate them out and check their expiration dates, obviously. But over the over the counter medications, of course, still have expiration dates, and you will want to know what they say. So if something expires in say 2019, and you got medication that expires in 2018, you're gonna want to use the 2018 first. Um. Only buy the amount of medication you're going to need. For example, if I was to buy a whole year's worth of KNC eye drops, um, I would make sure that 
I don't buy any more than 12 boxes because if you buy more than 12 boxes, besides it costs a fortune, um, what happens if, you know, if, um, I don't know, because it costs so much money, what happens if you realize you just bought something and then all of a sudden you look at the box and it says best of use by December of 2017? And you got, and then say, ten of March of 2018. Well, that's not going to do you damn bit of good, is it? Oh, of course not. No. Oh, great. That would kind of suck. So you have to keep that in mind. That sure, some things don't go bad that bad, um, too much, but they do lose the efficiency. One of the things I noticed with the the, the Blackwing film from Eastman Kodak, the BW400CN, is just that. Is the film has lost um, some of its efficacy and its um, exposure latitude. See, you might want to change the exposure setting from 400 to 320 on the exposure gauge because it's going. I've been looking at the pictures, they were a little bit underexposed. So, yeah, definitely you will want to adjust that. By the way, Eastman Kodak Lumen is actually going to be making, is, is building new film processing um, plants for motion picture films. Because uh, the demand for motion picture film for motion picture studios has increased. So I read, yeah, you read that too, but what about the individual films? Um, Where's the consumer? Well, with the new Kodak film, the new Kodak Ectochrome coming out in the next few months um in november of 2017 yeah you will see more um you can bet that these film processing plants will be also probably processing ectochrome as well which is then an e6 process so yeah you'll probably see some ectochrome processing speaking of cameras we got this little one over here we got to get the batteries for yes we do yes we will yes we will this is the um, this is Dory's camera. It's a very nice little Kodak camera or Nikon camera. It's called the um, M two ten AF. Um, it's a little. It's got a couple of scratches on it. It's not too bad. And it's got a. Um, you might want to clean the viewfinder. Oh yeah, you got it's yeah, it's kind of got a little bit dirty, you know. Throw your body camera used on eBay. Do you expect it's going to be pristine condition? Nah, I don't think so. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so this one has a zoom, and um, it's got a little display here. It needs a battery. I don't have it right now in here. It's just a CR123, and uh, we'll get that. And we'll so Dory can take her pictures. And I know she's excited to try it. I know I am. So. I know it's really hard to read the model number, but it says CR123A, so. Very easy. It's, it, they, sell, they do sell the batteries on eBay. And, of course, they do sell the batteries at the, or the uh, CVS. And they'll, and they'll cost you a godforsaken mint. Um, but, um, yeah, this is a, a nice little camera. And um, I know Dory's looking forward to using it. And I know that. She will enjoy using it. Um, granted, she will have to get used to. Uh, I had her using on the parade. She shot my other camera because obviously we wanted to take pictures and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, so you're going to be taking more pictures obviously soon. Yeah, I'm going to try this camera too and see how it works. And then we're going to send all the films to Clark, Fol Clark Holler and uh, get the prints back. You gotta go for CDs? No. No, I'm not going for CDs. Why? Because, first of all, I don't really think we need CDs. Well, Dory's a CD person. She would rather have pictures that she can go ahead and scan right into the computer and share with her friends. Yeah. I mean, it, it's gonna cost extra to have a, all the pictures on the phone. Um, four, two or three rolls on a photo CD. I don't know. Well, maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so, I mean, it's 
it's better than nothing. I, I, I will consider it, but uh, we are definitely going to get single prints anyway. Um, because the idea is to keep it inexpensive. Because, you know, when you're starting out, you know, you can start getting really crazy with all this fancy stuff with film developing work. And the idea is to get her started so she can see what the results look like. Right. Okay, next question. Um, so, um, where, are we going to upgrade any equipment in the studio in the next few years? Or are we going to stay with the same gear? Um, let's see. I'm just bring this microphone a little closer to me here. Um, that's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, we need more microphones. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we need one of those Galapo kind that will clip onto your shirt. Right. Um, that would be good. Um, granted... Some would say it would be better if the microphone was uh, on a tie clip microphone, but I don't have a tie clip microphone, so we'll have to do it this way. Anyway, the point is is that um, the microphone, um, a lapel microphone uh, or a tie clip microphone would be a good choice because then you'd have this um, better setup. Okay, but... Um, the microphone we have now works pretty good, but it, um, we need more desk mics. And, um, as much as I like the SM57, it is a nice microphone, is what we're using with this video. And it sounds good, and it really does. Um, they're very expensive to get an SM57. So I'm thinking about getting a, a PG48 or PG38. Once you get a PG58 or PG, wait, whatever something like that um i can go get an sm58 which is the the um the vocal version of this microphone um and now it work of course it's still a bit different curve on the sound but um for most things this microphone's pretty good because it's pretty flat response um yeah so i mean it, it's uh it's certainly something to consider for the future so, okay, let me ask you, okay. How in the hell, what, when you're going to take the picture, according to the instructions, is that you're supposed to push the button down some, right? Mm-hmm. It sounds like this key, this button, because of its nature, it's... Oh, I can sort of feel it. Yeah. Not really easy to feel, though. Right. So this is kind of nice, because this has got a, um... Uh, a nice lens that's a 30 millimeter, 70 millimeter. Okay. And, uh, so, and then, of course, this is the, you can see the back end of the lens here. Right. And this is the, the film here. It's got the DX codes in here. Mm-hmm. And so it's really easy. You just drop the film inside here. Okay. And you see that they just... And then there's a, so when it's, so when you're using the camera by itself, there's a rewind function. There's a, it's all motor driven. Yeah, it's all motor driven. Well, you see, um, she doesn't even have to worry about rewinding the film. She just pushes the button, takes the pictures, and then, uh, you just put them in the photo lab and boom, come back and we'll take a look really quick when they come back. And then you'll critique them. Don't critique them, but I think what we'll, um, the like story get the darkroom set up. Oh yeah, definitely. I still want to get the darkroom set up. That is definitely. But you still want to get new phones or uh, microphones and stuff for the studio. <sighs> yeah, I want some more cameras too. Ooh, but that's something that I've been wanting to do for a while anyway. Okay, no problem. This is so you want to get a multiple camera processor. 
and the mixer they they have a combined unit that has supports of two cameras and things like that right but the, um, the problem we have is um I think because it cost, I think that the ones that you can get for a security camera system would work okay because the delay wouldn't be super bad. I mean, it's just YouTube, you know? Okay. But, um, yeah, definitely um, get a, a, a couple color camera switchers, you know, because you'll be using the audio. I'll be going into, you can still get one of those video processors mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. Okay. So then you could still have the camera. Switches to slip between four cameras, and then you can have the video processor to do your fade wipes and cross dissolves and all that, right? And then of course you'd have, um, which that also has a built-in uh, mixer too. It has a couple channels for sound, yeah. That's not as good as a separate whole separate mixer, but then if we did it right, we could actually have a control setup so that we can have uh, do all the controls like. Fades, wipes, and sound manipulations, too. Oh, it'll be cool. Really cool. But that's for the future. That's definitely for the future. But what about the, the MPEG encoder? Well, I, I the MPEG encoder, we still haven't yet fixed the situation with the, um, the DSL yet to get the best bandwidth out of the system and until the vet bill is paid off in full we're not going to be doing anything with that right so um so as soon as the vet bill is like 75 percent paid that's about 400 and oh let's see if it was okay we're gonna bring it in the fifths okay it says the bill is four fifths paid. Okay, four fifths paid, or it's four hundred paid. Then we'll go ahead and pursue getting our DSL to the higher tier. But it's only going to help with download speed. It's not going to do nothing for upload. Right. And of course, the DSL from T-Mobile is still being used. Yes, um, the DSL from T-Mobile is still being used. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. Uh huh. You did a video on. Uh, Transgenders. I did, yes. Do you think people like the video? Not really. I think a lot of people kind of got a bit angry with it. But I think that they're not really listening to what I was trying to point out. Is that I'm not saying that you cannot have multiple genders. I'm just saying is, is that the craziness was is that until recently, no one ever really thought much about which bathroom you were supposed to go into or what your consider your biological sexual condition versus your gender and all that stuff and it just got really crazy i was like what in the hell is going on here um and it's it, and i it talked about how since stonewall in 1969 the whole gender versus sex fluidity it just kind of Got crazy and got out of hand. It certainly did. Um, now, for example, um, the Texas wants to pass for schools a new law for the bathroom, saying that you use the bath to use the bathroom of your biological gender. Okay, what's the problem? Well, gender's not the same thing as biological sex. Oh, okay, I get it. You're right. There is a difference. There is a difference. Even though someone says it's no big difference, it's a difference. Yes. Okay. In other words, your gender can be female, but your biology can be male. And so, therefore, if you're saying by the biological gender, then you're saying that they're, if they are a trans, a trans woman, that they're biologically female, biologically female. Or you're saying that they're biologically male. If you're going by the biological, you're going to need to say sex. There's a difference. There is a difference. Um, but I think most people have no clue about that. Right. Okay, so 
Um, what are you going to do for the rest of the week? Me? Um, not a lot. Um, I keep an eye on the news and stuff like that. And, uh, in June we got to pay some bills and take care of the debts and all the horse shit that comes up every day. <laughs> well, I see you more working your week. I have been, yes. I um, was walking around a lot um, on Saturday and Sunday, and um, I, I did a little bit of walking around yesterday, too, and I cleaned the house a little bit after I got back from all the activities. And, um, oh, let me actually get the date slightly wrong, but not by much. That's right. You went to the um, Ice Cream Social was on Friday night. Right. The pet parade was on Saturday. That's right. Sunday was just an ordinary Sunday. Correct. And that was also the day I washed some clothes and um, hung them up on the line. Okay. And since our washing machine is kaput, um, we need to get a new washing machine. And so you need to order a new washing machine. We, well, ideally, yes, we should order a new washing machine. But for now, I think for the interim, I think we'll have to go to the laundromat on the street. Probably on Saturday this week. Because I know Dory's been saying she wants to get some laundry washed. Uh, so, of course, she'll have to have money for laundry. Well, I think we're going to probably end up splitting the tab because i got to wash some things, too. But I really don't have much to wash. I just, you know, because the way I wear things over in a couple times. And I already washed the top, and i got to wash the dress tomorrow. And then, um, so by the time I do my laundry, by the time I get done, um, the only thing maybe we have to wash is maybe a couple pairs of socks. Right, so you don't think you're going to be doing much laundry with Dory this week coming up? I don't think so, but we'll probably have something to do. All right, guys, listen, it's we don't really have a lot to cover today, um, but we're just kind of glad that we got some things done and that uh, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, kudos, grapes, whatever, please do leave a message. Um, and we would love to hear from you. Um, be aware that uh, if you're going to respond to my channel, I will read your comments. Um, if for some reason you don't see your comments, I will check the spam filter or the held for review section to see if there's any comments from me that may have been put into held for review. And um, we will look at them and get back to you. And we hope that you will continue to... Um, watch my videos michelle's videos and if there's anything you'd like to ask us don't be free to we will we will read them and we will try to respond to them that's right okay guys until next time this is libby and finished us saying bye bye for now bye bye everybody